This is a view near Morton. That's Morton Church in the distance here. A uh, house. I might not put that in, but the church. I'll put. But I'll see how we go. I'll put it in afterwards. Uh, I'm going to do another or well, attempted sponge painting with acrylic, but using watercolour to paint the sky. Uh, AKA or in a similar manner to Terry Harrison, who is a great demonstrator of this particular technique, where I first saw it about 30 years ago. Um, it's a lovely white painting, just something a bit different. So this is Morton, uh, the, the, a village in Dorset where Lawrence of Arabia, T.E. Lawrence is buried and he went from that church. I googled it uh, yesterday and there's a, a 1937, a, a huge number of people turned up to the funeral including Winston Churchill. Uh, so it's very, uh, very uh, famous for that and we visited his grave and we've uh, We've been there several times before, uh, pay, pay homage, uh, I'll just say hello really. Uh, nothing sentimental, I'll put this to one side. I'm using a bit of, bit of the uh, paper is um, Canson, it's paper I bought in Florida last year. Very inexpensive and it was good price, two blocks of 30 sheets for something like $16 two for the price of one. Really, really good. I, I, I don't particularly like it as a watercolour paper, but I'm using it up for my acrylics and oils and, and stuff. So, uh, before I get on to describing the acrylic, let's uh, wet the paper. Use my, my hake for this. Quite a sunny day, but we had lovely weather down in Dorset. It's changed a bit since, quite a lot actually. So I'll wet it all over. And then I'll put a bit of bit of a raw sienna wash over. And a bit of a bit of blue. Right, that'll do. Now I'm going to dry that quickly. Take your headphones off. Let's go back to the, the picture again, the photograph. Oops, and just to explain a bit more about it. Right, what we've got is the, the scene framed by these trees, both sides. Not a shadow in here and uh, a meadow. We can put a few poppies in there if we'd like to put those in. Although I think the poppy season's long gone, it doesn't matter. Um, and any calligraphy will put in with the brush towards the end. So that's that's the plan campaign of attack. I've just been speaking to Alan Owen, talking about things in general. Right, uh, talking about his latest uh, paintings and mine. Right, okay, put my watercolours back in the, in the Ziploc bag, which is lovely, it keeps it nice and moist until next time, and the acrylics, I'll take you down so I'm going to try to remember to zoom up, right there we are, that's my stay wet palette with the proper membrane on, instead of the, the uh, data roundy thing. Um, the palette is uh, uh, medium yellow, uh, 
yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, ultramarine, burnt sienna, and some some uh, viridian. I was going to use this uh, light green that I used in the last one, but it's just a little bit too late. I, I'll put I'll put some out anyway. I'll I'll just put it down here, just in case I use it. You don't have to use my colours, you, you use whatever colours suit your particular taste. I only do all this as a guide for you. Um, this bit of sponge and a big pot of water. You do need a lot of water for this. This is a very messy way of painting, but it's, it's good fun. Um, the reason you do, I, I, Terry Harrison sorted this out. If you use acrylic as a watercolour, it will it will diffuse like this, but only to a certain extent. It won't bleed completely out. So <coughs> do the sky in in, a, in, in watercolour, then you can go on with your with your acrylic with with your spongy acrylic. So we'll put in a bit of a background with some phalo or some viridian and some alizarin crimson, a bit of blue. Bit of yellow. Oh, right, I'll come up. I can't show you all of that because you won't see me painting and I'd forget. I'll forget. Right, plenty of water on there. Because this does dry quite quickly. And we can change whatever we do quite quickly. So we just put in some, some of this. That side, that viridian, I didn't really didn't think that worked. So, viridian mixes very well with um, with the yellow ochre. So I'll, I'll let that go for a minute because you, whatever you do, you can you can change quite quickly. So we're getting a bit of a dark, dark shadowy green. Now I'm not used to doing this, so I haven't done it very often. It's just a way of showing you something a bit different. Oh, we've got some shad nice shadow in here. There's too much virgin in that. I shouldn't really have you. The viridian mixes very well with the uh, alizarin for a nice dark. I should have kept it away from the the green that I should have used, which was that, that light green. So let's just go back over and change, change that up there. There's a bit of a tree coming up here, a bit of a pine. More blue, I think. There's a tree coming over the top here, and a bit of dark on this sort of oak tree in there. And there's quite a lot of dark in there, so alizarin and the viridian. And I can superimpose the lights over the top of this. Now don't, don't worry about it at this stage, it's not uh, finished, it's, it's just a... Uh, 
just the initial washes going in. Dark, so now I can go over with the lights. Let's get that a bit raggedy up there. Okay, now I've put in put in this tree catching the light down the side here. Dark, this tree here, the oak tree is darker, so a bit of the lizarding, a bit of that thalo. Oh, I'll call it thalo, it's not really. It is actually the Viridian. Try and modify it to an olive, dark olive, drab green. with some lighter greens in there to clean the sponge. No, before I, before I get away from that, let's put in some green meadow. Now it's actually green, so I'll, I'll make it green. How bright that green is. Probably just a little bit unrealistic. And the better green will be the Viridian mixed with uh, with the uh, yellow ochre. That's a bit dark along there. No, that back in. Well, let's use a bit of the, the, the Viridian with the yellow ochre. So what happens. Let's get some light yellows back back in there in the in here catching the We look for your lights and darks in, in photographs. That's not very good, but we need that lighter. Some lighter areas now on, on this grass. So you could just work around the picture. It's, it's quite quite um, small paper. I'm gonna have to if I if I stick with or resolve to do more of these, I can uh, get some uh, larger paper. I've got well, I've got some. 
So I'm twice the size of this, the half imperial in Fabriano. Mm, that's not very really bright, is it? Let's go. I'll put some shadow colour on this. It needs to be lighter. And on that horizon there. painting with it now, I've got this by sliding it down, because I've got a shadow over that. Uh, got some bright green. Yeah, I think that uh, Viridian is just a bit too well I'm not used to using it put that way with with the sponge. Right. Now we need much more light now. Got uphill there too much. I'm going to put a bit of sky colour back in there. I think I changed my sponge. Do another one. Put back some some ultramarine, a bit of white. There's nothing uh, special about the sponge. So you can go bit away quite quickly and go back over it. I was going too too high up with that. Bunch of trees there. So that's just Back to the old sponge. That's not really a realistic green. I'm not very happy with this a bit of blue. Let's try a bit of blue. Dark's back. Thank you. 
So I've had silence. I'm trying to make it dark without using black. Just trying to show the shadows between these clumps of heavily foliated trees. We're good bird. It's really darker bits. How are we doing on the screen? Mm. Oh, look. What's the light on the screen? Uh, right, let's, let's put in some shadows. Just mixing up a dark shadowy colour like can with the Virgin and the alizarin. And then I can go back with some light shining through the, the the light seems to be coming from this side from behind. But this is all very experimental for me as well. It's not my, as you know, not my normal way of painting. This is what Terry Harrison specialises in. But he doesn't own the view, does he? I took the photograph. more light in that background. I'll probably just put just blue out the tops of those trees a little bit more just to show some distance. So we have a bluey green. Give it a bit of distance.
Nothing more dark. Now I want some light greens on here now because that, that tree is coming in from the, the from the side. So we'll put in some bright greens there. Yeah. Oh, just a little bit of shadow in there. A little bit of shadow in the foliage here. Mm. Right, a bit of white, bit of bit of ochre, just to separate that tree there from the background. So that's me just turning the screen screen on. It goes off after a few minutes. Let's do some calligraphy now. Uh, so dark, I'm just going to use alizarin and, and um, viridian. So I'm going to go back over it. Now Terry Harrison would do three demonstrations in an hour and a half. But he is a master of this sort of technique. And for stuff he wanted to highlight he would use masking for it. Don't like that. I don't think that's quite right. So I can go over that. Use your brushes, use uh, plenty of water with them and, and don't leave them to dry. I'll change a bit of that. Uh. 
just tone it down a little bit. Right, a uh, bit of alizarin, a bit of blue, a bit of ochre. I'm just going to put some, put some of the church in. Got a house in there, so a grey. this bit now I'm having trouble on there just to show those those spires in the corner here there's uh, might be a kink in the paper there I don't know Yeah, that's not behaving itself there. I don't know why it's uh, struggling a bit. So this is where I start mumbling. in a bit more detail. So I just want to put in a bit more detail around that flank wall there, which will be sort of quite a light. There. Right, well there's not a lot more I could do with that, I don't think. Uh, Mm. 
The shadow doesn't seem to be too bad. There's no other detail in that really, other than some bits of light. Let's put some some light cloud just just dobbed in behind behind these trees here. Let's just open it up a little bit. pure white in a painting. Right, well that's, that's as far as I can go with that. It's, I don't think it's too bad. I'll zoom you in. Well, we'll put a, we'll put a mount on it first because that does add 50% to it. The next one I will have a go at will be large on the double size, I think. I'm not making any excuses for it, but... Uh, But like all these things, knife painting, brush painting, you need a lot of practice. Practice makes perfect. That's just a bit too heavy along that line there. Couldn't sort that out, I don't know what went wrong there. But anyway, let's... Uh... So we call that Morton Church. It's, it doesn't really show up too much in the photograph. It was really looking through between well, it's just a nice, nice country view. All right, let's uh, go back to the view. Let's uh, show you. There's the view. And back up to my version of it. Well, I don't know. It's not a disaster, is it? Anyway, let me know what you think. I'll go and upload this next. That's a little bit of a bit of a mess but as I say practice gets makes perfect bye for now